Hey, welcome, welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. Although at the rate other people are nicking things that I say and repeating them in their films. If I do ever get YouTube famous, people are going to know what I'm saying before I say it. <laughs> now, hopefully I've remembered to put this film into black and white, or at least the intro part of it, because this is a palette bingo with the ever so beautiful Stars Hollywood Jessica. And we're using a palette from someone who made it off of my shit list and onto my limbo list. It's the Moon Spell from Manny. So, if you want to find out exactly which colours each of us has, and what makeup looks we've made of them, then my friend, you are in precisely the right place. As I have said from pretty much the inception of my channel, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay, it is literally just gone 7am. So far it's been bright, overcast, bright, overcast. It's currently overcast. So the white balance on this could go up and down quite a bit today. Um, <clears throat> we'll have shown you this in the intro. I know, I know, he was on my shit list for a very long time. But if you've watched my most recent hit shits in limbo, he's currently on the limbo list. And I liked the look of the colour scheme of this palette. More so than either of his previous three. Because he had the Life's a Drag was the first one, wasn't it? And then he had the Greek Goddess one, then he had the strawberry one. This one it's the only colour scheme that really applied to me or appealed to me but there was no way I love this packaging too there was no way I was paying 50 quid for this but I managed to pick it up on Depop for about I think it was 20 quid I think I paid for it plus postage so I'm like yeah okay I'll pay that for it might have been 25 actually Trying to, I wish that. Oh, it does fold right back. I wish companies would stop with the reflective packaging because it makes it very difficult. To, ah, there we go. To actually show you the colour scheme. Now, I would have told you in the intro that this is a collab with my beautiful friend Jessica, and we have chosen the colours for each other on this palette bingo. And the colours she has chosen for me are Prue, Sabrina, Bonnie, Nancy and Fiona. So, greens and purples. Happy days, happy days, happy bird. Right, if you want to know what colours I've chosen for her, you're going to have to go and watch her film watch you finish watching this one or go and watch hers and then come back to this one I don't mind so long as you watch both of our films uh, this is still a teaching channel so by virtue of that and by virtue of my chronic pain which is still chronic uh, I blend considerably slower than most people there is a speed widget up there Feel free to use it. Uh, I'm just going to insert in just a moment a clip 
where I talk through the difference between hooded eyes and deep set eyes. They have similar issues in terms of what happens to your makeup, but they have very different workarounds. And I'd never really seen anybody discussing the differences between the two. Although I have noticed that since I've been doing it, there are a couple of people that are saying very similar things in their films without giving credit to moi. I see you. I'm storing it. Karma will deal with you later. Anyway. Uh, when I insert this clip, I will be very up close and personal. Please don't scream. Once the clip is over, I'll be back to start applying the colours from here and chat to you a little bit about my lovely friend Jessica. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour you don't have that trade-off with this you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour now she does six different shades of this at the moment White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush 
sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which 9 times out of 10 will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey! <laughs> Just realised quite how bright these little visitors are today. Yes, they appeared overnight. If they stay for more than 48 hours, I'm going to start charging them rent. Yes, I am. Right. Um, I'm going to start off because I want to have a lot of control over how far I blend these out today. Rather than going in with one of my big fluffy brushes like this one. Or like this one. I'm going to go in with this blush tripe one. Now whatever the distance or the width of the head, that's roughly how far it will blend the colour out. So, I'm going to start off by going into Nancy, I think. And uh, there's a little bit of kick up in pan on this. It never worries me when there's kick up in pan. I don't know if you can actually see that. There we go. Because it means you're getting pigment onto your brush, which is good. Um, I always do my eyes before my base anyway, so fallout's never an issue. And uh, you can pick up the excess from the top when you go in and add a bit more to your brush. I'd rather put very little on the brush like I've done here and build it up than put a huge thwomp on and then have the great fun of blending it out. As always, I hold the brush at the end to stop myself from putting too much pressure on the eye. I love the handles of these brushes. And I'm going to start here and do my usual circular movement. And I go in this direction towards the nose. And then I'll reverse the direction when I'm coming back like that. Right, so I'm going to slowly build this up. And uh, have a chat to you about my lovely friend, Jessica. Now, um, I actually follow quite a few Swedish YouTubers, and Jessica is Swedish. And I list them in my description box because. I love watching them. I don't know whether it's because um, Sweden being so much further north has a lot of times of the year when it is very few daylight hours. So I don't know whether that's what encourages them in terms of colour. But I have noticed that the Swedish, or at least the Swedish people that I follow, um, all love colour, which is great because, I mean, those of you who know me know that I'm not scared of putting some colour on. Um, you know, every now and again I'll throw you a neutral look, but I think it's easier when you're doing um, tutorials as well to do them in brighter colours. Because then the person watching can easier see the placement of the shadow and how you blend it out rather than if they were all very, very neutral. 
and I love doing tutorials. I know it means my channel doesn't grow as quickly as some, and I know it's you know it doesn't get the, the greatest of views, but um, there's a certain lady, Julia, that I know watches my films and she goes to one of the foot care clinics that my mother-in-law does and um, hi Julia if you're watching by the way and mum said to me how she has since she told Julia about my channel and she's been I guess following my tutorials Mum said that her makeup has improved so much and that she looks so much um, more put together in terms of her makeup because a lot of people, if you follow a tutorial, people cut the blending out so you don't actually see how long it takes to blend something and you can see from this where I'm chatting to you I mean, greens and purples are the most difficult colours to create and make them blendable anyway. Um, and a lot of people don't realise just how long it takes to actually blend a colour out because most people cut that out and that's why you see a lot of people with only partly blended looks because the beauty guru stop blending so that means I have to stop blending it, it's you know the other thing I always say is every so often sit back relax your brows and just check you've got the same shape going on both sides because your eyes are not symmetrical and unless you're a certain person that uh, photoshops their results like a, a certain Mr Jimmy Chuck that we all know and love You very often have to do slightly different shapes on each eye to make them look symmetrical. So you can see I'm leaving a bit of a gap here. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to be going in with the purple. And if I mix purple and green together too much, it'll go muddy. So I want to leave a reasonable sized area each side for the purple just to go straight onto my uh, eyeshadow primer. So Jessica, um, I'd done my first, this is my makeup collection films, um, and I don't, if, if you don't upload films to YouTube you wouldn't understand this bit because you, you'd never have to do it, but when you upload a film you have to put the metadata in, so basically you have to tag it so that anything that you think people might search for that would relate to your videos so tutorial um, ASMR for me for example or the name of the palette the name of the person you're collabing with all of that goes in and whatever you've put in as your metadata YouTube thinks oh well you must be interested in that because you've just put a film up about it and it will start showing you films from other creators with similar tags. Um, and that's how I first discovered Jessica, because I discovered her I have 1400 palettes film. And I'm like, that's got to be a mistype, surely. 400 palettes, yeah? No. <laughs> no, no, she had 1400 palettes at the time. I'm just cleaning this brush off on um, a microfiber cloth. I don't like using colour switches. In my early tutorials you'll see me using colour switches. I don't like using them. They're far too rough on the brushes. Um, especially if you've got natural hair brushes. This, this is synthetic, but natural hair brushes and colour switches are not good. So yeah, I'm going to go into bonding now and just blend out this top edge. So that was how I discovered Jessica and the first film that I saw of hers I only saw her hands going into all of her Ikea Alex drawers 
and showing all the different palettes and everything and heard her voice. And I just fell in love with her personality. I thought, oh my goodness, she sounds so lovely. She sounds just like the sort of person that I would want as a friend. Not just because, can you imagine the makeup play dates? Um, <laughs> but because she just, she sounded so genuine and so lovely. So I started watching a few of her other films and thought, yeah, really like this woman, I'm going to subscribe. And subscribed, had a bit of a binge watching session on her films. So, bless her heart, she must have thought I was a stalker, all of a sudden all these comments coming up from me. Um, and we were chatting away and etc. And she commented on one of my um, photo inspiration films that I'd done and said that she thought this was a really lovely idea. Um, so I sent her a message on Instagram saying, would she like to take part? And we've been firm friends <laughs> ever since. Um, I absolutely adore her. She is one of the reasons that I started this channel. Um, partly to to help my friends out because they were like, oh, can you come and show us how to do my makeup? Or in a lot of cases, can you do my makeup? I've got an, an event to go to. Um, and they'd be like, oh. I wish I'd recorded what you'd said so that I could follow it back for the next time I do my makeup. So I thought, well, I'll just set up a YouTube channel. You know, my mates can just dip in and out of the different tutorials as they see fit. Um, and it kind of took off a little bit. Um, I thought I might get 50 subs. And, um, well, I nearly broke 700 and then all of a sudden the subs went back down again, so, yeah, deep joy. Seems to be the case, every time you put a film up lately you lose subs, which is lovely. Right, you can see this; these greens are actually blending out really nicely together. I'm just... I've not got any more colour on the brush now. I'm literally just blending where the two shades meet to get a nice soft gradient between the two. And you can see this is why I wanted a more tapered brush so that I had more control about how far the blend went. Otherwise that first green would have blended too high up and I wouldn't have been able to put this shade on. But um, yeah, I absolutely adore Jessica, and through Jessica I found quite a few other people as well. I'm just going to clean this brush off, and then I'm going to go into Sabrina, the purple. Or the deeper of the two purples. I might... I might try this Morphe M562 brush which is very very tapered I might give that one a go for this purple I may have to swap back to this one or a slightly larger blending brush for this bit here but to control it through the crease here I think I'm going to try this one the brush is clean it's just stained deep joy um, yeah, and I, I absolutely adore Jessica. We've we've collabed on a number of different things now. Um, we did the one row in a palette. We've done a couple of the photo inspirations. Um, and now we're doing this one together. Which is awesome. So, and we've got a collab coming up soon. Her, I and Anya. Because all three of us were lucky enough last year when Blush Tribe had a competition on we all we were, we were three of the five winners of um, some neon pigments so we'll have another film going up soon with the three of us doing a neon look together which will be fun 
So you can see here, this is what I was saying about, that's why I've left this purple here, this, this gap here for the purple. Just so that I can get a good blend going on without it going muddy. I really like that look actually. Because although it's blended, you can still see all three individual shades. And I like that. I like that a lot. Um, I might actually grab one of my Morphe Jeffries, the JS12, which is a bit more densely packed than the Blush Tribe one, as I was saying, just to do this bit here. Yeah, so that's how I discovered Jessica. Um, and she is, I mean, if you don't already know her, where have you been? She's just, she often says that she's not a tutorial channel, she's more of a, um, although she is actually a qualified makeup artist, and she's a professional bowler, and she works in finance. I mean, just, she's so eclectic, it's like we were destined to be friends. I'm just going to again just buff this really gently into that green so that we get a bit of a blend but without it going muddy and the way to do that is to get all the colour in like I'd already done and then without adding any more pigment onto the brush very very lightly blend where the two colours meet so you're kind of dragging the green onto the purple and the purple up into the green if you try and think of it that way. I do struggle here and here on both eyes with um, very very dry skin, almost like eczema. So that can affect sometimes when I'm putting the pigment on, in which case I just tap it on like this and then start blending. So I'll start off this side with this one and then go through the crease again. Now with this eye I do struggle because I have super deep creasing here caused by the ophthalmic hospital when I was five years old trying to work out why I wasn't seeing me properly and normally this circular movement that I'm doing will um, gently move the skin of your eye around without tugging on it so that you don't get the tiger striping that I'm getting there but unfortunately, next door's guys are having fun, uh, but unfortunately that doesn't always work on this eye because the creasing is so deep and when I'm putting shimmers on I do have to stretch the lid out because otherwise the shimmer packs in loosely rather than being blended on and then ends up cascading down my face as I move my eye through the day which is great. One of the nice things about when that side are playing and being loud and likely to be picked up on the film is that I don't ever have the worry about having to bleep out swear words, unlike when that side kick off. Because, oh boy, does the other side like to swear. Like sometimes I think if you took away profanities they wouldn't be able to have a conversation with each other 
So again, I've gone back to the Morphe brush just to get this nice fine line going like so. And again, you can see this is what I was meaning about how it'll go muddy where it mixes if you're not careful. But thankfully, I'll be covering that with a bit of shimmer in a minute. So. Remember, there are no mistakes, just happy little accidents, a la Bob Ross. Again, just very, very gentle blending. I love the colours that she's chosen for me, you know, they are me. She knows me so well. And uh, Jessica has this uh, Gorgeous dog called Gunvald. Hi Gunvald. He's beautiful. You very often see him in the background of her films. He'll be sort of like trotting around. He's lovely. He really is. Hopefully, either I'll be across in, you know, in, in Sweden, or hopefully she'll come over to the UK soon and we can actually meet up and have a coffee together and a good proper chin wag. That's what I'd like anyway. Right, I'm going to grab one of my Morphe Jeffree Star lip brushes. These are the JS24s. The reason I like these, if you look at the shape, they come down to a point which is great for getting right into the corner of your eye, just there. And I'm going to be using my Slay All Day. Once I've packed pigment onto the brush, I will wet the pigment using the Slay All Day. Now, the, I normally would use a cheaper um, spray to do that with. But for some reason, the Jasmine Slay All Day dries my jawline out. Nowhere else, just my jawline. So I thought, right, I might as well use it up like this. It's the only one of the, the Girard ones that do it to me. But Right, so I've packed Fiona onto both sides. Wet the brush. Always, always dry this ferrule off. Easiest way to do that is tuck it in your knuckles and spin. Because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here, loosening the bristles on your brush. And I'm going to pop this about halfway along. And all the way out to the corner. This is really pretty green. Really pretty. Just dry the brush. Go back in and pick up some more pigment for the other eye. Again, dry the ferrule off. So that purple is a little bit patchy, but fortunately I'm sticking a shimmer over the patchy bit, so hopefully you shouldn't notice too much. This really is a stunning green, it's almost like the colour of kingfishers, you know? Right, let's clean the brush off and then I'm going to go into a prune. Which is the fifth shade that she chose for me. Yay!
Okay, this is quite a crumbly texture when you go into it. And then it starts to go hard pan. So it's obviously got quite a high oil content in it. Right, let's pop this onto the inner part of the eye. That's what I mean about this brush getting right into the corner there, really nice and easily. Turn it off and pick up a little bit more pigment. I like this, but it doesn't have the same opacity as the green does. There's no kind of base pigment to it. Which kind of makes me wish I'd put this on first. It looks okay, so that's good. Yeah, it's almost like this is almost more of a topper shade than kind of full opacity. I mean, you can build it up as I've done on this one, but it's uh, not quite the same opacity. As I said, it doesn't seem to have a, a, a much of a base pigment to it. But you can see, I I put that on, and as soon as I'd got it covered, I let go. So I only stretch it out as far as I need to. And as soon as I can, I let it go again. Now I'm just blending the green and the purple together there, just to... There we go. Right. Happy days. I am going to pause you now, my darlings, while I go and put some foundation and some other base products on and uh, I will be straight back to finish this eye look off with you. Now I'm going to have to wait until the next time I press record in order to speak to you. You however will see me instantly and hopefully these two little buggers will be covered up. Hello, I am back. As you can see I decided to do coloured brows today and because I know a lot of people are saying they can't get hold of the pomades the coloured pomades that I've been using because it seems like Revolution just I don't know whether they're just not bringing them back or if they're repackaging them or reformulating them this is an alternative way to get your coloured brows so I basically used the soap brow method to fluff them up and um, make them a little bit sticky and then just using one of these I dipped it into that purple and just filled the brows in so you can always have coloured brows and you can match it to your eyeshadow look. Isn't that fun? <laughs> right. Going to grab the next few brushes that I need. So, going in with this flat topped brush. 
I'm going to dip into Fiona, which is this deep green here. I'm tapping off well because I don't want to fall out now I've done my base. Just going to run that along the lower lash line. Now I've always struggled with putting things into my waterline. Um, if ever you see me with something on my waterline, it's probably been done for a photo and then it'll be gone again in like a matter of minutes because my eyes just water like crazy. Um, my hay fever has kicked in already, even though it's only March. And fire makes your eyes runny. So all these things combined, putting anything in my waterline, well, a waste of time. But you can always do like I do and smoke the lower lash line out. And then you still get that impact, but hopefully without the irritation. Right, this is um, the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it for the under eyes. It's flat topped but it's chunky so it's really great for getting up underneath your lashes. And I'm going to go into Bonnie, which is the lightest green that I used here. And I'm just going to use this to gently buff along that lower lash line. Just to help soften it a little bit and to mirror some of the colour that we used on the upper lid. And yes, I'm flinching this side, but I'm blind in that eye. I have no peripheral vision, <laughs> and the viewfinder is quite a long way away when you haven't got your contact lens in or your glasses on. And regular viewers will tell you how often I poke myself in the eye. It's a regular basis. There. Oh, I'm really loving this look. Love these colours that Jessica chose for me. They'd actually make really, really good Halloween colours. So having just said that, I'm going to grab my Colourpop Cruella highlighter. You idiots, you fools, you imbeciles. <laughs> this is just a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay probably 10 years ago or more ago now. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of that under the tail of the brow. This just helps give a lift to the brow um, and makes gives it a more youthful, elevated look because apparently your brows, like your babes ladies, go south for the winter. Well, thankfully mine are not too bad at the moment, they're still where they should be. So, in a corner, regular viewers know that I like to bring it along under the tear duct and just blend it in with the colour that I've run underneath my eye. I just like the way it finishes my eye look off. So, that is it as at present. I am going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to lob some more of this highlighter on my face. I am going to put some mascara on. I am going to choose a lipstick, do something with my hair, and I'll be back. Again, my darlings, for you. Instant. Hey, I am back. This is the finished look. Obviously, you know it's Cruella on my cheeks. Um, I used the 
a blowout mascara from Revolution. The lipstick is another one that my lovely friend Hedda sent to me. And this is The Duchess. So I'm feeling very regal right now. No photos. <laughs> oh dear. Right, so this is my finished look for the palette bingo with the Moose Girl palette. At the moment, I'm still reserving judgment on that. That purple was quite patchy. But I need to try it again on a day when maybe my eyes are not quite so dry. Uh, but I will do a separate review of the palette. This is the How Do You Think I Did Using the Five Shades That I Was Allocated. Hmm? What do you think? You like? You don't like? Let me know. Uh, if you are one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are deleting people left, right and centre. And at the moment, they're sending people home, thanks to the coronavirus. So, who knows what's going to happen. Does anybody else think do 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 my corona? No, just, just me? Okay, just, just me. I apologise for that earworm, because if you're anything like me, you're going to be humming that all day now. Um... Once you've double checked you're subscribed and you've either liked or disliked the film uh, If you're going to dislike leave me a note and let me know what you didn't like please Be brave, grow a pair I doubt they will, they're just too happy to click dislike and then run away All counts as engagement, I don't care Right, but once you have done all of those good YouTubery things, I'm going to need you to go across to my beautiful friend Jessica and check out her channel. You can see which colours I gave her and exactly how she has interpreted them in terms of the makeup look that she produces. And of course, do all those good YouTubery things over there. Make sure you like her film. Say hi, tell her you're from the 4F family, show her the same love that you show me, and if you're not already subscribed to her, why not? What are you doing? She's amazing. You need to subscribe. Trust me, you will, you will thank me for it. You really will. You will thank me. Go press subscribe on her channel. If you are here from her channel, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you've made it this far through the film, I'm guessing there was something you liked. Even if it was just my weird blethering or singing at you randomly. It, it's the Welsh half of me. It, it just happens. I have no control over it. To be fair, I don't have a lot of control over a lot of things my body decides to do. Or my hair. But that's part of the fun. So glad you are here. Uh, if you want to join the 4F family, it's super easy. You just hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, and then turn notification bell on and say yes, however many times they currently ask you whether you want to be notified. And then hopefully you'll get told about one of every four films that I put up at least. Speaking of which, I do have an awful lot of other films that you can go and watch. And uh, as I have said for some time, pick a playlist. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and relax and indulge. It's something I've said right from the start of my channel, although, funnily enough, I seem to find a lot of people are starting to use that little saying as well. I've had people comment and send me messages saying, was I aware that this person was uh, using my grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up phrase. Yes, I have been aware. Yes, I have been watching. Let's say no more about that for the moment. So, all 
that remains for me to say as ever my darlings is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.